Good to go when you are, Helen. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our community conversation. My name is Helen French, and I'm the Director of Development and Education at NASW New Jersey. Um, we're so happy that you could join us for this conversation. Um, you know, we've been through unprecedented times over the last year and a half. And really, how are we going to get back to normal? What is normal? What was normal? Anyway, we are thrilled that Dana is here um, to talk about this. Um, she's uh, a certified school social worker and also a member of a crisis response team. Um, let's see. Oh, Dana has maintained her humor throughout the pandemic with the help of some 1980s classic movies. You're not old enough, Dana. So um, she's gonna explore ways to adapt to stress and build resilience on the journey back to pre-pandemic uh, activities. Thanks so much, Dana. Take it away. All right. Well, thank you for having me and welcome everyone. And thank you for spending uh, your lunch with me today. Uh, today, uh, I have uh, gotten some inspiration from the movie Back to the Future. Uh, I'm going to reveal some spoilers. So if you haven't seen the almost 40 year old movie, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to tell you the end. So be prepared for that. Uh, So just a little bit about me, I'm working with Mental Health Association in New Jersey's Crisis Counseling Program through New Jersey Hope and Healing. I provide groups for teachers, parents, healthcare workers, and teens. I'm also a school social worker and a senior adjunct at Burlington County, uh, at Rowan College of Burlington County and Wilmington University. So today I, I'd like to talk a little bit about how you're feeling about returning to this new normal and some strategies to kind of address some of the feelings of uncertainty you might be experiencing or you might be helping others through some of these feelings and some practices to adopt to build resilience. So let's start with Back to the Future. Uh, if you don't know, Marty McFly uh, was, the movie was set in 1985 and an unexpected and abrupt change happened when he was transported into 1955. And you might be able to relate because last March, we also had an unexpected and abrupt change, something that we weren't prepared for. And then throughout the whole time of quarantine, we experienced confusion, difficulty understanding expectations, how we were feeling. Did anyone you know, make any impulse purchases like rolls and rolls of toilet paper, or perhaps buy something at the store like the last box of Pop-Tarts when you haven't eaten them in 10 years just because you felt like you needed them? Well, that's exactly what happened in Back to the Future. He was, Marty was living in 1955. He was having difficulty adjusting to the expectations of, of this new life. And the entire focus of the movie is for him to get back, get back to the way things were, and that's how we've spent a, a lot of the past year. We really wanted things to just get back to the way that they were. We talked a lot about our two, 2019 selves and how could things be like that? And now, you know, here we are and we're back. And uh, I named this Back to the Future because uh, we spent a lot of time that over the past year and a half living in the now, the day to day, because that's what we needed to do. But I think we've become cautiously optimistic about planning ahead for the future, the next milestone, the next birthday. How can we celebrate that? We, we kind of had this protective idea that we didn't wanna to look too far ahead because we didn't wanna be disappointed. But now we're, we're starting to think, what will the next birthday be like? What will the next graduation be like? Can I, can I plan to go somewhere? Can I fly on a plane? Can I travel? And all of this hope and anticipation is so good for our mental health. Future rewards and kind of thinking about laying on an island while you're working in front of your computer is so motivating. 
And we kind of lost a lot of that. So here we are planning to think about the future again. And, you know, you might be having some mixed feelings about what, how are you feeling about resuming normal activities? So if you want to just say in the chat, are you feeling hopeful? Are you feeling potentially uncomfortable, concerned, mixed emotions? So feel free, you can unmute and yell it out, or you can type in the chat. So normal activities might be going back into the office after you've been working at home. It might be attending an outdoor event like a baseball game. Uh, it might be like attending a major league baseball game at a stadium or attending uh, a child or family relative's t-ball game. But how are you feeling with resuming some activities that you used to do? Hi everyone, my name is Elena. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. I really appreciate this presentation. And um, I, I feel concerned with not protecting myself, not wearing the mask, not practicing social distancing. Um, even though they're saying it's lifted and you can go back into somewhat a normal way of living like it was, but I don't feel comfortable with that because right now for me, it's like they're still learning about this virus and everything that it can um, do and destroy because I mean, I, I give it much respect. It, it, it destroyed so many things in, in a matter of time that it was like in a, a matter of seconds, it was destroying and destroying and destroying. And for now to me, I'm vaccinated, but for me to actually take off my mask around people and not practice social distancing, it concerns me. It concerns me and um, I'm going to practice it. I'm going to practice it uh, because I just want to protect myself and I also want to protect my family. And um, my mom is 90. I mean, she don't live with me, but I don't want to ever even think about that. I had something and I gave it to her, you know, um, because she's, I'm allowing myself to actually, you know, pick her up this weekend and, and have her with me in my home. So um, those are my concerns, you know, taking off my mask and not practicing social distancing. Sure. Thank you, Alina, and thank you for sharing. And it's great to hear that you are doing, you know, you are resuming an activity by bringing your mom over. So that's that's great to hear. Yeah, I'm really excited. She just turned 90. <laughs> oh, that's great. Congratulations. Okay. So Helen, um, do you have some, some stuff in the chat for us? Great. Yes, we have. Um, Chris says, I have some mixed feelings about returning to work. I welcome seeing all my co-workers. However, I have some reservations about being in an enclosed environment. Um, Jeff said, I have a lot of mixed emotions. It's definitely anxiety provoking. I went to my first sizable non-mask gathering, a graduation party this weekend, and it definitely was a strange sensation. I have to say personally, when I first started going out and people didn't have masks, it seemed quite bizarre. Um, we have a, a school social worker. She says, um, I'm feeling mixed emotions now that I'm hearing about this Delta variant. Um, she wonders how September's going to be in school. Um, one thing I really miss is the slower pace of life during shutdown. It was much less stressful than normal. Great, great point. Yeah. Uh, I feel anxious regarding going back into homes and working with families due to the unknown. Yeah, that's uh, that's key with social workers, isn't it? Being forward facing, uh, public facing and on the front lines. Um, Chris says, Elena, I can relate to the non-mask wearing at the present time. Although fully vaccinated, I still have lots of reservations about it. So thank you for sharing everyone. Yeah, thank you. Well, and and I have to say, I anticipated that everyone would feel mixed emotions because how we actually feel, how we think we feel, we might feel happy that, you know, things are, are getting back to normal. But when we really reflect on our comfort level of, of different activities, it's likely, um, and, and Chris, I, I like how you described it, 
you, you have reservations. We have these mixed emotions because it is something new. We've uh, adapted to a lot of different changes throughout the past year and a half. And, you know, potentially being cautious at a time like this it, it is a protective way for us to kind of re-enter uh, um, normal, quote unquote, normal experiences. So what is the, the term re-entry anxiety? It's the stress of transitioning to, to the new normal and it's an uncertainty of what it will look like. So again, it's just, you know, thinking about, are you comfortable going to places where people don't have masks? When do you feel comfortable? When are you not feeling comfortable? And this re-entry this re -entry anxiety, our brain interprets uncertainty as fear and then fear activates the limbic system. And when we have the limbic system activated, we're not able to kind of engage in that rational thinking and decision-making. So now's a great time to really reflect on your feelings and really develop some tools in your tool bag, in your toolkit, so that you know that if you're feeling uncomfortable, you have some plans, you have some strategies to kind of uh, enact. And potentially it, you might be helping others do the same so that they can feel comfortable. So some strategies to try and reframe reentry, reframe expectations and the need for uncertain, uh, the need for certainty. So um, when it seemed like it was the end of the world, uh, it turns out it was just unpleasant, but we learned a lot of lessons. So, uh, and this isn't necessarily about the pandemic, but anytime we feel like we need certainty, we need to know. It, it turns out that, that sometimes it's okay if we don't always know. Um, when we experience uncertainty, it brings our brain into balance and we're able to anticipate both positive and negative outcomes. So it gives us, it, uncertainty kind of gives us that opportunity to, to I guess, for lack of a better term, roll with the punches. And, and sometimes we need that, especially when we're feeling stressed. So a, a strategy to try is a brain dump. Potentially, um, you could use your phone and use a voice memo. You can put a journal by your bed, but just get your thoughts and feelings and ideas on paper. It's a way to kind of declutter your mind. If we think about our brain as like a computer, all of these uncertainties and potential feelings are kind of running in the background. It's all of these tabs that are kind of open and just give yourself the opportunity to get your feelings on paper. And maybe you need to get your feelings out and re-examine it at the end of the day, at the end of the week. If you're feeling anxious about something specific like going somewhere or doing something, get your thoughts on paper. And then after you either do it or don't do it, write down how you felt. So it's a great way to kind of examine how you're feeling and, and what some of your thoughts are. It also helps you improve productivity and increases your focus on activities. So by closing all those tabs that are running in the background, you're able to focus on the thing right in front of you. And that's going to improve your productivity. I saw some, some ideas in the chat pop up. Is there anything you'd like to share with us, Helen? Um, Caroline says, I've experienced this re-entry anxiety, just going to the closed places like the grocery store, especially when there are so many people without masks on. Great. Well, and it, it's okay it, to, to feel that anxiety and there's no right or wrong place to experience it. It doesn't have to be a big event. It could just be some of our our normal day-to-day -day activities, like going inside of a bank, going to the grocery store, um, it, it could pop up anywhere. And you wanna have these strategies so that you feel that you can take them out at any time. So a, a strategy to try is the Control-Alt-Delete method. And again, if we're gonna go back to our brain as a computer, this is a way to control the shoulds and the what ifs, because the what ifs kind of are like pop-ups now, pop-up blocker on the computer has taken care of that. So the Control-Alt-Delete method is going to take care of some of the what-ifs that might pop up that have you worried. So assess what you can control. 
it's important to put problems and expectations into perspective. If you're going back into the office, there's gonna be some things about the office that you can't control. But focus on what you can control. And I love this remote control because it says what I can control, my attitude, my actions, how I react, who I follow on social media, who I unfollow, my behavior, the boundaries that I set, and how I speak to myself and others. So we're not, we might not be able to control the policies or what the person in the cubicle next to you is doing, but if you're just able to put into perspective what you can control, uh, I think that will, will really help you to manage your expectations. And assessing what you can control promotes growth. It gives you that opportunity to really reflect. And it encourages active problem solving. When we feel like things are outside of our control, we feel helpless. But when we recognize this is something I can control and this is what I can do about it, it's really helpful in moving forward and, and maybe engaging some of that creativity to become an active problem solver, either for you or someone else, or potentially for an organization. You might be able to bring uh, a, an idea to your boss or to a company to really help improve everyone's experience in the office. Create an alternative of playbook, uh, create a playbook of alternatives. So just like in any sport, uh, there's just a playbook of what you're going to do. And creating the play is just part of it. You really have to go on the field and do it. So come up with a plan. If you're feeling worried about what you're going to do when you go back to the office, have a plan and create contingencies and prepare for what ifs. What if I'm feeling uncomfortable here? What if I'm feeling uncomfortable in this situation? Have those contingencies, have those plays and practice what you will do and rehearse what you will do and what you will say. So when you do experience this situation, you already have the words, you already know what to do, just like in a playbook. And delete self-defeating thinking. There's no right way to get through a difficult time. Just like everyone's experiencing a lot of different emotions, there's no right emotion to feel. There's no right way to get through this challenging time. So find silver linings in some of the challenges you're experiencing. Remain flexible, even when it can be challenging to do so, and keep an open mind about changes or potential concerns that you have, again, try to enact that problem solving part of the brain. Use hum humor um, to prop yourself up when you are feeling concerned uh, and practice gratitude. I like this quote and, and it really helps kind of reframe maybe some of the challenges that you are facing Gratitude helps you fall in love with the life you already have. And that's important to consider, especially when we're thinking about um, reflecting on how we feel. It's important to think about some of the silver linings. So I'd like to check in, Helen, is there anything in the chat you'd like to share? Or if anyone wants to unmute and share, please feel free. Yeah, I wonder if people want to share uh, what they're grateful for. Can I show you one thing? Yes. <laughs> this is my um, gratitude jar. And what I do each uh, week, I write a little post-it of what I'm uh, grateful for, put it in here. And then um, New Year's Eve, I'm going to open them up and see, see how the year went. That is lovely. Well, and uh, Helen, that is a perfect opportunity to point out when we're thinking about the future, how just that anticipation of looking ahead and, and how exciting that can be. So thank you. Anyone else like to share a, uh, a strategy that they use for gratitude or uh, something that they're feeling grateful for today? Yeah, Chris says, I love the um, gratitude mantra. It's uh, inspiring. Great. Well, thank you. And I think it's also important to consider that difficult roads often lead to beautiful destinations. 
would you like to share an example where uncertainty has led, led you to a positive outcome? Uh, Caroline says, I wake up telling myself a few things I'm grateful for. Today, I told myself I'm grateful to have a family. Great. Thank you for sharing, Caroline. Would anyone like to open up their mic and share a past example where uncertainty led to a positive outcome? It's a good question, um, Dana. It's making me think. Thank you. Well, and, you know, I, I have to say it might be difficult to think about it on the spot, uh, but it's, a, it's something to keep in mind because a lot of times we do kind of just jump with a leap of faith. We don't always have all of the answers, but we aren't always 100% certain and we do have positive outcomes. Uh, so that's something to consider when, uh, you're kind of reflecting on some decisions you make or you will make over the next couple of months. Dana, do you have an example of, um, you know, something that led to a positive outcome? Is there something you'd like to share? Sure. Uh, I feel like there's uncertainty with almost every decision and it can be uncertain when you take a new job or you take on a new responsibility um, you might be concerned how you'll do or, you know, how you'll fit into an organization. But typically, when people take a leap, it, it ends up being really positive. And, uh, you, you know, I would just say, even just in working with Mental Health Association in New Jersey, working with different groups and, and the opportunity to, to meet new individuals and really provide a lot of different supports this year. Um, when I thought that I maybe couldn't take anything else on my, my full plate has been wonderful and a great opportunity to meet others. So Helen, thank you. Thank you for asking. Well, so I'd like to uh, transition now to dealing with uncertainty and I'm certain everyone here can deal with uncertainty. And I'd like to start by talking about some practices to adopt and hanging on to habits. So what's a new habit you developed during the pandemic? I have to say for me, I was, when I was home, I was making a point to walk during lunch. And I thought that that was just wonderful opportunity to get outside uh, when otherwise I would have probably continued to work and sat right in front of the computer, eating my lunch, just continued. So it was a great way to kind of create that break. Anyone else have a habit they've developed during the pandemic? Well, I like to share that the fear of having even to go to the hospital for anything um, during the pandemic, it, um, I developed the habit of working out every day, doing calisthenics at home, getting on the treadmill and going for a bike ride. And I wasn't doing that before the pandemic. So it has actually, you know, helped me to develop a new healthy habit. Great. Thank you for sharing, Elena. Absolutely. And, you know, it, when you reflect on some of your practices, it could be that, you know, you took time in the morning, you maybe spent time with pets that you typically wouldn't have done. You've read more, um, you've been able to either garden or develop a new hobby. And it, it's a great way as we do start to resume normal activities to think about what are some ways that you can hang on to those habits? Really thinking about, or, or potentially maybe it's whether it's eating right or not spending as much money um, when you go out or developing a list at the grocery store. I used to just go in, walk around, no list. Now I have a list, I know where everything is. And like Elena said, that was kind of out of necessity at first, but now I realize hmm, having a list, not bad, not a bad idea. So it's something small, but it's something that I wanna to continue to work on. We've got a couple of comments. Uh, Jennifer says, I started running in the morning and uh, she's continuing, well done. 
Um, definitely exercising more and finding more crafts to do. Um, meeting a friend for a daily walk, uh, which helps emotionally and physically. Um, I've enjoyed being outdoors more often and connect with nature and taking long walks that um, I normally wouldn't have. Um, my son and I also started painting together and continue to do so. Oh, nice. It's wonderful. Yeah, thank you everyone for sharing. So when we're thinking about developing habits, you want to hook your habit into a daily routine. So uh, Jennifer, I think you said running in the morning. So that's something that you do right when you wake up or right after you have your coffee. So you build it into your daily routine. Then you hold yourself accountable. Whoever said walking with a friend, that friend is walking alone if it's not for you. So that friend is holding, holding uh, you accountable or you can find ways to hold yourself accountable. And then highlight your success. Post, post uh, a, a week of walking on Facebook or uh, develop a, a little journal where you write down something you're grateful for or happy that you accomplished. So really take the time to brag about your successes and ways that you've incorporated healthy habits and consider how you can continue to hang on to them as we move into kind of the new normal. Another practice to adopt is setting new boundaries. And a, a, a lot of the feedback I heard from people who uh, were trying to adjust to the pandemic and quarantine was there were some things that they didn't miss. Maybe obligations like being out almost every night, doing a lot of activities, or maybe they enjoyed having a, a kitchen appliance that they never even opened before because they were always getting takeout or always out and about. So what are some ways that you can reflect on some of the things that you've done and maybe not create as many obligations or really consider how you can set boundaries as you become more involved with either social organizations or at work and, and set those boundaries. I, I like this quote, love yourself enough to set boundaries. Your time and energy are precious. You get to choose how you use it. You teach people how to treat you by deciding what you will and won't accept. So consider what are some obligations it's okay to let go of and what are some things you wanna get right back into doing and really allowing yourself that time to maybe not do things that you want instead of feeling obligated to, to do a lot of different activities. How to set boundaries, just think about what you value. And what do you need to do? And how you can honor it or hold yourself accountable or how you can ask others to honor it. Um, and it could be someone in your family, it could be a coworker, it could be a boss, it could be a friend, but just allowing yourself that time to, to create those boundaries. And boundaries can sometimes be difficult to set, but now is a great time as we kind of resume different activities, it's a great time to kind of put the re reset button to, to really think about what you want to do and maybe what you might not want to do. Focus on the present. So choosing mindful activities to process rather than avoid your feelings. So it's wonderful to kind of take a time out and potentially watch some reality TV, but also give yourself time to do an activity where you can process your feelings. I read a wonderful article a couple of weeks ago about someone who uh, adopted coloring. And she said that coloring was kind of a great way. Uh, it was, it's a cheap activity. You don't have to have hardly any skills to color. Um, and it's a great way to kind of think about how she's feeling, reflect, it keeps her mind busy, it helps her to focus. Um, and it gives her that opportunity to kind of check in to see how she's feeling. There are plenty of activities that we might need to kind of wind down, like um, watching reality TV. But when we're doing that, 
Um, it, it's restorative, but we might not give ourselves that time to kind of check in to see how we're feeling. So focusing on the present with a mindful activity, it gives us the benefit of channeling energy, creating feeling of peace and calm, it improves our attention and it boosts our mood. So consider developing a coloring habit, even if it's a, a few minutes a day, it's kind of a great way to, to give yourself that time to check in. So check in with yourself and others. Uh, just some questions to ask yourself. How am I feeling? What's working? What's not working? What do I need to do? What am I happy or proud of? And what can I let go of? It's a great kind of circle to, to get uh, acclimated to feeling, um, seeing how you're feeling, but also a great way to kind of check in with others. And checking in with others is important. And I just wanna take a minute to highlight this Rutgers initiative. It's called Check You, Check Two. And it was developed last year for healthcare workers because typically healthcare workers um, don't ask others for help, but they've experienced an extreme amount of stress over the past year and a half. And this wellness initiative is thinking about how do you feel? Take two minutes to kind of check in how you feel and then check in on two two oh co-workers and and how important that is just take those, those two minutes to check in on, um how how others are feeling uh because others might not know to ask for help or that you're there for them so it's important to to kind of work that into uh your daily routine especially if you are back in the office or you are part of an organization um to give someone that opportunity to, to kind of um, share how they're feeling also. And there's plenty of benefits for reaching out. So not only is it great for someone to, to kind of have someone check in with them, but you can also benefit by being the person who reaches out. It reduces your own anxiety. It puts your own problems into perspective and it can decrease your own stress because you're creating that connection with others and that can help reduce burnout. And it allows you to improve your communication skills by using language that relates to others and builds those social skills. So not only is it important to reach out to others for them, but there's also some really wonderful ben benefits that, that you can uh, have also. The two most powerful words when we're in a struggle is me too. And of course that's from Brene Brown, uh, but it's a great way to kind of frame how you're feeling and you know, others are feeling some of the same emotions and they might not be able to put words to it or have reflected on how they're feeling. But as much as it's important to, to kind of feel um, and check in with ourselves, it's so important to be able to, to continue to make these connections with others too. And putting empathy into practice. Uh, there was a great article at the New York Times, just great, um, a, a lot of different areas are covered. Uh, it's called a year of living better. So I would highly recommend, it's a great way to kind of check in uh, different activities that you can do, different things to consider. It's great for all ages to read this. Um, so a, as much as we've all experienced that shared empathy during the pandemic, it's important that we don't lose that in our daily interactions and, and conversations with others as we do move forward to, as someone pointed out, kind of that faster pace as we're moving and, and we've kind of merged off the shoulder back into traffic, into the uh, highway. <coughs> it's important for us to think about how can we continue to practice that empathy? And building a resilience network. So it's not just one friend, it's family, it's friends, it, it's coworkers, um, people that you can turn to, that you can rely on. This quote by William Shakespeare, a friend is one that knows you as you are, understands where you have been, accepts what you have become and still gently allows you to grow. And I think that that's important. You, you need to surround yourself with people who understand that you might not be feeling optimistic all the time and that's okay. And that 
they allow you to kind of share your emotions, experience how you feel, and they're there to support you. Because uh, as we said, you're going to be feeling a, a lot of different emotions as we kind of navigate the, the uncharted territory uh, of uh, experiencing what the new normal is like. And just a reminder to also show self-compassion. Treat yourself as you would treat a good friend. And that includes maybe not pushing yourself to do things you're uncomfortable with. Um, that if you want to wear your mask and everyone isn't wearing their mask, that's okay. We're, it's important that we really check in to feel how we're feeling and allow ourselves to, to experience being comfortable. And I like the, this uh, quote, there's no better time to be kind, to remind yourself of how far you've come, not bringing up how far you still need to go, to care for yourself in a way that only you can without relying on the words and actions of others, to fall in love with taking care of yourself without feeling obligated or guilty for it. It's time to create an unbreakable love for yourself that cannot be broken by the unkind words and actions of others. So again, this is our opportunity to reflect on how we're feeling and to really be kind and be mindful about our own feelings and how we can honor those feelings as we navigate the re-entry. Dear me, don't be so hard on yourself. You're doing okay. And sometimes we need that reminder. We need that opportunity to, to kind of remind ourselves. So again, I don't know that the, these are all ideas that you might not have heard before, but it's important to, to kind of remind yourself, how am I doing with some of these things? Some of these things I tell others every day in my own practice, I share and, and suggest and recommend, how am I doing with them for myself? And, and how can I sometimes take my own advice and really not be hard on myself? and really think about some of the practices that I have and readjust. Find a, find a mantra. When things get challenging, whether it's a theme song or whether it, it's something that you say to yourself or you say to others, find something that, that sticks with you, that is helpful. When you're feeling down, um, makes you feel happy. When you're feeling nervous or scared, helps reassure you. Maybe you need one mantra, maybe you need a few, but find something that, that really inspires you, whether it's some quotes on your desk or whether it, it's a song that you listen to in a car ride to make you feel better. Whatever it is, really take time to find something that can help support you. Helen, are there some, uh, some comments in the chat? Yeah, um, excuse me, somebody shares, my mantra is, your anxiety is lying to you. Everything will be okay. I love it. <laughs> um, if, if whoever put that, if they want to create like a shirt or a tote bag, you can put me down for one. <laughs> um, I work with somebody whose mantra is it's going to be fine and that really helps with my anxiety because after all it is going to be fine isn't it sure great yeah and this is so important Taina as well because um, I'm sure the social workers on this call now, but um, our code of ethics has been revised in 2021 and now professional self-care is highlighted. And what I can do is I'll put the link um, in the chat. Wonderful, thank you. And again, even though that's something that we should be doing anyway, it's just another way to hold ourselves accountable as that reminder that at the end of the day, you are still your most important person on your mind and, and ways to, to kind of continue to, to support yourself. So thank you, Helen. And that's a great segue into my next point about creating a plan for self-care. As we move forward, think about 
and I work in a school. So I think about like a plan for self-care is almost like a lesson plan that teachers make for their class. You're just lesson planning for one. This is a treatment plan just for you. So come up with things that are deliberate, meaningful, restorative. It's a daily practice that takes time and effort. So potentially before, maybe uh, you were part of the work softball league or you went out to happy hour every, every Friday. A lot of those things aren't built into our schedule anymore. So you really have to think about what is something that's meaningful to me and how can I create that opportunity? Do I need to set a reminder on my phone? Do I need to schedule it in my calendar? Whatever you need to do. And self-care doesn't have to be the same thing. It doesn't have to be a bubble bath. It can be something that's really important and meaningful to you and what you need at that time. So creating a plan, what do you value? What do you need right now? And what are some self-care activities that you can do now? So one of the things I realized in uh, supporting some individuals during the pandemic, because I do do a, a, a drop-in counseling group for individuals who tested positive for COVID. And one of the things that, that struck me is that their self-care was always something physical, going for a run, exercising. But when they weren't feeling well, they couldn't do that. And they just didn't have a lot of other self-care activities. So think about what, what are some activities that maybe you haven't thought of that you could try. Again, it could be coloring, it could be yoga, it, it could be something very small, but giving yourself a wide range of activities and, and strategies that you can use and pull from. If, uh, if you're feeling tired, if you're feeling like it's 11 o'clock at night, but you need a self-care activity and running outside might not be the best thing. What are some things that you can do and activities that you can plan for? Um, what are some things that you can try? You don't have to like everything. So throw that tool, throw that strategy away, but it's a great opportunity to try something, maybe something you aren't thinking of. And as you kind of refine what is important in your self-care activities, you can try some things, create a plan to to develop them and incorporate them into your regular routine. So just to recap, some practices to adopt, hanging on to habits, some things that you've developed over uh, the past year and a half, setting new boundaries, focusing on the present, checking in with yourself and others, building a resilience network, showing self-compassion and planning for self-care. So making yourself a priority. So what it looks like now and what it will look like in hindsight is very different. And I think that we can all acknowledge that it, it's been quite a road that probably looks exactly like that. But when we reflect on, on how we've kind of transitioned into this new normal and um, re-entered and uh, kind of navigated the anxiety that you might be feeling, that when we look back, it won't seem as bumpy as it feels right now. So just some final thoughts, it's okay. It's okay to have bad days, to be less than perfect, to do what's best for you, to make mistakes and to be yourself. So thank you everyone for your attention. I just wanna share New Jersey Hope and Healing has a call and text line. So feel free to, to share it. Um, so the call line is 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. daily. And then we have a text line where you can text with a live person on Mondays through Friday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. And Saturday and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. So if you haven't seen Back to the Future, I feel like I already know what you're doing this weekend and you need to see Back to the Future. But any questions, comments? I love the oh, techniques. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I thought you were muted. Go ahead. I love the techniques that you shared, and it's also very deliberate. You know, I think we go along with life, don't we? And there's not a deliberation 
are making sure that our mental and physical health is is taken care of. Um, I'd love to hear from others um, about some techniques that you um, took from uh, Dana and uh, how you think you'll be able to incorporate them. You're welcome to unmute. So Dana, Hi. what? Oh, oh sorry. Hey, yeah, it's, go, it's Jeff Helen. Hi, I just wanted to pop in. I really liked some of the hobbies and things that people have come up with, and you know, it's it's inspiring to hear people that have gone out and and started running daily or walking. And and for a while, I was doing the walking on a regular basis, and I kind of have fallen out of that. And I really I need to get back into taking that time for myself to to do some walking. And I, I like the idea of, uh, of repeating the mantra. Uh, I, I may have to go and put that on a shirt, like you said, Dana. Um, and as far as hobbies, yeah, I think, you know, I, I wish I could, uh, I, I wish I had a hobby that I've been able to find so far, but uh, my wife recently uh, took up cross stitch again, and she's really been enjoying that as a way to occupy her time and to kind of her brain and as a bonus she's actually been able to sell a couple of the things to friends that that she stitched so uh yeah, there's there's all kinds of opportunities out there great jeff thank you for sharing absolutely and you know again there's so many opportunities to kind of experience different different uh activities that could catch on as your hobby so even though you haven't done it yet there's still there's still plenty of Zoom classes and, and different activities that are starting to open up that you might find, you know, really catches your interest and becomes a passion. Um, Dana, you had a slide um, back a couple of slides where it was um, how to think about self care, you know, think very deliberately. I don't know whether it was the flower petals, but mm -hmm like something actually personally I'd like to use. Um, do you mind going back to that slide so I can have a look? Is it this one or the mantra? Yeah, I think it was the seven steps. Oh, okay. For yeah, for yeah, I, I, yeah, I think that's really um, some good questions to ask yourself. Great. Yeah, it's a great little roadmap uh, as a way to kind of think about what do you need. And uh, again, sometimes we get stuck and we think, you know what, I'd like to run, I'm going to run and this is this is what's going to make me feel better. And that might not be it that we we really need to take the time to kind of develop just like if you were planning for a class. You can't do division every day and say that's a math curriculum. You have to really think about what what does everyone need and how can you find a way to kind of move forward in, in what you in creating your best self. Dana, I don't remember if you've done this already, but it might be helpful just to read those seven steps out loud really quickly because the slide text is a little bit small, so I'm not sure everybody's able to see it. Sure. So the seven steps, you start out by what do you value? And then assess what do you need right now? Again, checking in on how you're feeling and then create a list of self-care activities. What are some things you do now? So thinking about what, what are some of those things that you do now? What are some self-care activities you would benefit from adding? Whether it's a hobby, whether it's something you could do, you know, you could do at night, you could do in bad weather. Um, so creating a list of all those contingencies again, and then refine your focus. Don't try to add everything all at once or do everything all in a day, but it's great to kind of create this, this mental list, this opportunity to kind of add and refine and then create a self-care plan and set some simple goals. I want to try one self-care activity. So again, similar to, uh, uh, essentially if you've seen like on uh, Instagram, a self-care bingo, where you just create a, a whole sheet of different self-care activities and create a goal. I just wanna get bingo by the end of the month or by the end of the week. 
so just something simple, a, a fun way to kind of look at what are some things that I do? What do I always rely on? What do I feel like takes too much work? And then commit to your goals and keep track of your progress. Something small and simple, but a great way to kind of assess where you are, what you need, and how you can move forward. Thanks, Dana. Mm -hmm. The other slide that I really liked was a couple of slides forward. It was a post-it note um, that was, uh, I, I forget exactly what it said. It was two or three slides forward from that. Um, it was about uh, the one about it's okay to have a bad day. Yeah, that's the one, the it's okay post-it note. I that would be a good shirt too, I think. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's one that I feel like I need I need to put that post-it note on my laptop so I stare at it multiple times a day. <laughs> sure. Well, and you know, just like I said before, we would share this information with a friend. We'd share it with a neighbor. We'd say it to a stranger who was having a hard time. If someone was online ahead of you, you might say the same thing, but we don't give ourselves that same grace, that same leeway. We don't cut ourselves the slack. So uh, it, it's important that we really need to think about how can we do that? How can we incorporate that into our own practices? Yeah, and it, it's amazing that it's so hard to do because most of us wouldn't think twice giving that advice to somebody else. It's so simple to say to somebody else, you know, it's okay to make a mistake or, you know, it's all right that you're having a bad day, but I, I, maybe not for everybody, but I know at least for me, I struggle so hard, str I struggle so much to, to allow myself to accept those things and feel those things. Right, right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Caroline says um, that it's also good to write in uh, your journal so you can look through and have those reminders, you know? And it's to get your thoughts out, isn't it? Because sometimes we're locked into our own heads and just writing down or saying it, you know, like you said, it, it, uh, it helps dispel, doesn't it? Absolutely. Well, and, and even if we, like you said, we're locked, locked in our head, even if we said it out, lo out loud, what we say to ourselves and we imagine saying it to someone else. We might be very surprised at how harsh or how not nice it seems, but we allow ourselves to, to think that way all the time. Well, this has been wonderful. I think we've got time for a couple more uh, comments or questions for Dana. So please unmute yourself um, or, or type in the chat. Uh, I love this. We need this kind of stuff to, to remind ourselves, you know, um, we, we go through life, we do get so busy and caught up. Um, but this is this is very important um, to, to keep in mind. Um, and I love the, the whole treat yourself as you would a good friend. Uh, I know somebody who's going through a very stressful situation at the moment and they need and they're a really great friend, you know, so they need to treat themselves as they treat others. So, yeah. Absolutely. Well, and two, uh, again, I just want to reiterate how much I appreciate everyone taking the time today. And I think that's the first step in just taking the time to, to think about some of these strategies. And I think a workshop like this for professionals is similar to when baseball players go to spring training. They're professionals and they, they, they're not learning anything new, but they are getting back to basics. And it's sometimes just reminder uh, about things that maybe you've gotten rusty on, like taking care of yourself because you spent so much time taking care of others. So it's a great way to, to kind of just uh, take in um, and reflect on what are some of your own practices and how can you take away a few things and just maybe improve just, just a little bit or try something new or just maybe some great ways to recommend to others different things that, that they can try. Brilliant. 
Well, thank you everyone for taking the time. I hope you um, got some good, I don't know, learn something new or it reinforced things um, that you already knew. And thank you so much, Dana. We really appreciate your expertise. And I know that you're crazy busy at the moment. So um, thank you so much for coming on. We hope to work with you again, if it's possible. And people are putting in the chat. Thank you very much. They really appreciate it. It, um, and I'm going to wish everybody a great day. And remember, do some kind of self care for yourself. Bye, everyone. Thank you.